I'm William Bell. I want to welcome you to our All Things Fulfilled channel. And uh, this is a special segment that we do called In and Out, where we're doing just a short video, doing one particular point. We're focused on the theme of Matthew 24 and comparing it with Revelation chapter, uh, with Revelation, the book of Revelation. Our aim is to show that Matthew 24 was fulfilled in 70 AD, which is widely accepted that the Olivet Discourse was fulfilled in connection with the events of 70 AD, but also uh, to show that the events of the book of Revelation correlate perfectly with Matthew 24, with the Olivet Discourse, and therefore demonstrate that since Matthew 24 was fulfilled in 70 AD, Revelation writing the same things, just describing them in more apocalyptic language or more highly figurative language, in many cases, not all of it, but much of it, but that they were likewise fulfilled in 70 AD as well. That means the book could not be written after 70 AD, but had to be written prior to 70 AD in order to be fulfilled in connection with that event. And that just totally dispels this idea that Revelation was written in AD 95 or 96 in the reign of Domitian, uh, because it's just not true. These events, as we stated in the previous video, Jesus said there would never ever be such a time, and since Michael stood up at that time to fight for his people, that there will never be another such event, and therefore Revelation had to be fulfilled then. Well, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the end of heaven and earth. Because we have the end of heaven and earth in connection with the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. We're also going to show you an end of heaven and earth in the book of Revelation. Now, are we dealing with two ends of heaven and earth? Or is it the same? We're going to suggest to you that it is the same. So let's go ahead and get uh, started. In Matthew 24 and verse 3, the Lord said, uh, the disciples came to the Lord and they said, in response to his statements that not one stone would be left upon another that will not be thrown down, they asked the question, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And the Lord began to respond to them. But one of the things that he told them was that immediately after the tribulation, which we covered in Matthew 24, 21, that the sun would be darkened, and the moon would not give its light, the stars would fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens would be shaken. Well, that is a description of the end of the Jewish age, end of the Jewish world, the end of the nation of Israel. Israel would come to an end, but when would that occur? Within that generation, Matthew 24 and verse 34, assuredly I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Now, in Revelation chapter 6, we have the end of heaven and earth described in precisely the same language of Matthew 24, 29. In verse 12, it says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. So think about it. The scripture in Matthew 24, 29 says the sun would be darkened, and the moon would not give its light. Revelation is just telling you how dark it would be. It would be as dark as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. The sun should be darkened, the moon would not give its light, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, and the powers of the heaven would be shaken. Now notice, when it is shaken, excuse me, the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Do you see the shaking of heaven and earth there? Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island moved out of its place. That's the shaking of heaven and earth. And the people running to the caves and rocks saying, fall upon us, etc. Well, that's what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 29. Now, how many times can you shake up the world? For people who want to apply that to a physical world, 
That doesn't work because it doesn't fit within the first century generation. This is something that fit within the first century generation. And the Lord said, the sun was darkened, the uh, moon would turn to blood, and the stars of heaven would fall from heaven. The powers of the heaven would be shaken. Here's the shaking of heaven and earth right here in Revelation chapter 6. And remember that was in connection with this tribulation. And what does Jesus say? Immediately after the tribulation of those days. And so right after the tribulation events that are mentioned in Revelation 6, you have the heavens shaken, the sun, moon, stars, etc. darkened in the book of Revelation, just like you see in Matthew 24. Do you think all of these are coincidences that you have these direct parallels in Matthew 24 or the Olivet Discourse and the book of Revelation? All of them can't be a coincidence. They refer to the same event. But the Lord didn't just say that the sun, moon, and stars would be dark. He also said heaven and earth would pass away. Matthew 24 and verse 35. Heaven and earth would pass away. Well, let's turn to Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation 20, and the verse is 11, the Bible says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Then when you get to chapter 21, he says, Now I saw, this is after heaven and earth flees away, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The Lord said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never pass away. So in connection with Jerusalem's fall in 70 AD, heaven and earth passed away. Well, that's not the physical heaven and earth, but that was the heaven and earth of Israel. It was that civil and religious system of Israel that passed away, described as the sun, moon, and stars falling from heaven and being shaken. Paul wrote in Hebrews that the heavens were already being shaken. Heaven and earth was already being shaken when he wrote in the 12th chapter of Hebrews. He said, in verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. Heaven and earth was already being shaken in the first century, in the time of the apostles. As of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. And thus, heaven and earth passed away. The sun, moon, and stars were darkened and fell to the earth. This is apocalyptic language, of course, but that all happened before that generation passed in Matthew 24, 29 and verse 35. Revelation 6 and Revelation 20, verse 11 and 21, 1 describe the same event and therefore all fulfill in connection with the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The conclusion is inescapable. And so that means Revelation could not have been written after 70 AD, fulfilled in events starting in 95 or 96 and continuing up to this time. It was fulfilled in connection with the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD parallel to Matthew 24, and there, therefore proof that these events are in the past and not in the future. We encourage you to subscribe to this channel and um, click that red button so you don't miss any videos. Uh, we hope that you'll leave some comments. Let us know what you think about this series of lessons. Uh, we also encourage you to share them to your social media sites and with friends and family. And um, here we are once again. We got in, and now we're getting out. I'm William Bell with All Things Fulfilled. Take care. We'll see you in the next video.